Hey everyone, it's Misty from the Missouri Star Quilt Company, and today we're going to refresh a project that we did back on Missouri Star Live, so be sure to stick around. Many years ago on Missouri Star Live, I made this Stars and Stripes table runner. It's really easy using Jelly Roll strips, and I thought it was time to refresh this, especially because it is in the Volume 9, Issue 2, issue of Block Magazine. So if you are a Block subscriber, you already have this. And just as a reminder that you can subscribe to our print magazines or our digital editions. And the digital editions have all kinds of fun bonus content in there. So be sure to check it out. This is the version from Block. They made it in this rainbow colorway, which I think is really fun. And the one we're making today is a nod to that original one that I made, which is in red, white, and blue. So let's dive right into this. To make this project, we can open up our Block Magazine here and see that we're going to need um, some two and a half inch strips. I am using All American, this beautiful red, white, and blue collection by Wilmington. And I have used this in another project. You'll remember from our patriotic string star pillows, we use the same fabric. So if you picked that up, you probably have plenty left over to make this runner as well. You will also need a quarter yard of background fabric. I just used this great uh, tone on tone dot from Wilmington. And then you need a half yard for your border and a half yard for your binding. I have found if you're really, really careful, you can actually get both your border and your binding out of that half yard cut, but we always like to tell you a little bit more in case there's any cutting errors along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin with, we're gonna make this stripe section in the middle of the runner, and these are all two and a half by 11 and a half inches, and I just alternated between the red and white stripes, and there are 13 of them, a nod to our 13 original colonies. So let's go ahead and cut these down. I've got some red and white stripes here from my pack. I'm just going to make sure that they're folded nice and straight. And I'm going to line them up. Here's my red one. And I'll put a white one on top. And then since these are already two and a half inches wide, I can just cut off my selvage. And then we can count over 11 and a half inches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and a half. And we can make a cut. And then we can open this up and we can get one more cut out of this center section here. So you can see how if you want this to be scrappy, you can totally mix this up, but you can get a lot of cuts out of one strip. You can get three matching stripes. And so now I need to measure over so that I have that 11 and a half inches. Make sure I'm doing my math correctly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half. I was right. It's just always better to double check. And so this little bit is our waist. So we can just set that aside for now. And so once you have 13 of your red and white stripes, you're just going to take those and you're going to put a red and a white together. And when you're working with these tonals, you do want to kind of check because there is a right and a wrong side. And so I'm just going to put those together, right sides, and we're going to sew down a quarter inch seam. And so you can do this in sets of two. You'll make six sets. There we go. And we can go ahead and press this back. I always like to roll my seam so it's hidden underneath the red and I don't have any of those showing through on the white. 
just like so. And I have a bunch of these other ones ready to go. So let me just go ahead and open this up. I've made a few here. Looks like I need to add a few more. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then we'll take one more of our strips to make 13. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and add this one first onto the end here. Make sure that's lined up. There we go, we'll press this. And we can add that other set. You can see how quickly these start to come together. There we go. And now we can add this on to the rest of my stripes so that we have 13 going across. And remember each of these were two and a half by 11 and a half. Just take some time, make sure they're all lined up. We'll give this one final press and then the entire center of our runner is done. Ta-da! So fast. Now, one of the reasons that I decided to put the stripes in the middle is because Jenny pointed out when we are decorating our table, usually there's a, you know, a bowl of fruit or flowers or a candle in the middle. And so she always says you want to put your ooh-ah on the ends of your table runner. So I took that to heart when I was designing this. So we have just these simple stripes in the middle. And then of course our stars are on the end. So let's dive in on how to make those stars. Okay. So this is that star block that we're looking for. It's really quick and simple. And so we're just going to grab some of our blue strips here. And I think I like this one. Okay, so now that we have this blue strip ready to go, I've got it folded in half twice. So there's actually four layers of fabric and I have my selvage end over here. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim that off. So I have a nice even end here and I'm gonna measure over four inches, one, two, three, four. And I'm going to make my first cut and that gives me four two and a half by four inch rectangles. And then I'm going to measure over again, six inches and do the same thing. So it's just that little bit of waste. So I have four two and a half by four and four two and a half by six. I also out of my background have cut some two and a half inch squares and some four inch squares. And like I said, these are from the background fabric that I gave you that yardage amount earlier. And we're going to need these to make our stars. So let's go ahead and I like to take my two stacks over here to my sewing machine. And the trick on this is we're going to be doing some snowballing. So let me go ahead and grab a pencil because I wanna show you what we're looking for. To make this star work, the magic is just in ensuring that our snowballs are going in different directions. So I'm gonna lay my ruler here and I'm gonna draw a line corner to corner. That's gonna be our sew line. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. There we go, We've got both of those drawn. Now in order to have these work how we want to, I'm going to snowball each of these. But you can see now I've set them 
so that the line is going in opposite directions. So that's my goal here. I wanna make sure I'm snowballing this set one way and this set the other way. And it doesn't really matter which way as long as they're opposites. So to begin with, let's do these shorter ones, our four inch pieces. And we're going to do these all exactly the same. So I've got my stack here. I'm not gonna draw anymore since I have my diagonal seam tape on my machine. I just wanted to show you with that first one. So I'm gonna begin by placing this first side right under the needle and the opposite um, corner is on the red line of my seam tape. And we're gonna sew right on that line. And now I can pick up the next one and do the exact same thing. There we go. All right, these four are ready to go. So now I have my scissors handy. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this off, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. Again, this is just a preference thing. If you wanted to take this and cut these with your rotary cutter, you absolutely can. Every once in a while, it's nice to use your scissors. So I've got those trimmed. And now we can press these back. We're just gonna roll back those corners. All right, so those are done. And now we can do our six inch pieces. So same idea, wanna make sure it's going opposite. So I can double check here. You can see this one's going this way, this one's going this way, which is what we want. So I'm gonna put this one under the machine. And again, we're gonna sew all of these point to point. I'll go ahead and do that, trim and press, and meet you back here. All right, so now we have both of our sets pressed and ready to go. You can see they're going in opposite directions, which is exactly what we need. And I've got our four inch background squares here ready to go. One of the things I love most about this block is the entire process of making it is really, um, it's chain piecing friendly, I guess, is what I wanna say. And I love that because it speeds up the process and makes it feel like you're really zooming through because you can save some of that time in between. So to start, I want to take my background square and my two and a half by four inch piece and I want the long side of our navy to match up with the square. So you can see what I've done there. They just match up perfectly. And so actually I'm gonna turn it since I'm right-handed and it's gonna go this way, you can see all of my pieces are gonna fit on just like that. So I'm gonna chain piece this one after the other by adding this strip in the same way on four of my background blocks. There's one. Again, make sure you have right sides together. That was almost wrong right there. I didn't catch it. Now we can trim these apart. Now, because I'm only making one block to show you guys, I've only sewn four of these, but if you were making an entire quilt or you were making the two blocks like on this runner, you could continue with all uh, essentially eight of these sets that we're making and that would give you the pieces you need for both squares. And it just saves time. The longer you can sit at the machine and make those same stitches, that's what's so great about chain piecing. There's that. We're just gonna press all of these back. And now we can match these up with our two and a half by six inch pieces. Let me get these stacked neatly. So you can see, I'm gonna turn this because again, the long side of our navy is gonna match up with the long side here. And so 
we are just going to now fold this over, right sides together, and we're gonna sew these down just in the exact same way. You can see I kind of always keep it right here next to my machine so I can make sure that I've got the orientation right and I haven't turned it the wrong way. And our last one. Ta-da! All right, so now we'll trim these part again, and we can press, rolling that back so our seam is hidden beneath our navy strip on all four of these. Oops, make sure it's going the way I want it to. All right, so now let me move this out of the way. We have our four quadrants ready to go, and these just rotate around just like so. So you can see how quickly that star block comes together because of the chain piecing. So I'm just gonna fold these two right sides together and sew our block. Make sure it stays lined up all the way down. And then without cutting my thread, I'll put this one in behind. There we go. And now we can open these up. Got a little twist in that there. We can place these right sides together. You could press in between if you want. I like to press at the very end when I get to this stage. One thing I didn't mention is I am checking um, where these little points meet, to, meet up together, like right here on the block. You can see where they're coming together. So I'm doing the same thing over here just to make sure that those are lining up nicely. That's really the only place that is gonna show on this block. And then I'm gonna also make sure my center seams are going in opposite directions, just so that this will iron out nice and flat. So there's my center seam, and then again, lining up those little points. And all the way to the end. Ta-da! There it is, there's our block. Let's go ahead and press it. So that'll lay nice and flat. I love this block. It is so quick and so fun. And now I have another one all ready to go and we are just going to add one of these to each end of our strip set. So let's go ahead and sew this one on. They both should be 11 and a half inches wide. So it was gonna match up just perfectly. There we go. And line up this end. And we can just sail down this side. See how great that looks? Now we'll flip this around and add one more. There 
there we go. That is really it. That's the center of our entire runner. You can see here on this finished one, I went ahead and added some more two and a half inch strips around the outside for an outer border, just all the way around. And I went ahead and bound it with red um, just to give it a little bit of pop. Um, I sent it to our machine quilting department here at Missouri Star and quilted it in stars and loops. And it just turned out so fun. It's a great one for a last minute decoration if you're celebrating uh, Independence Day or uh, anything like that. It's just really fun and festive. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.